Welcome to our next episode of Fandom Family Chats. This is a production of Family Fan Clubs on Facebook. You can find us all over Facebook. You can find us all over social media under Fandom Family Chats. Look us up, get dialed in, get plugged in, and get ready to listen to some crazy people talk crazy stuff. Hey guys, I'm Maureen. I'm Jeanette. I'm Shelby. I'm Amanda. And we are back with another episode of Fandom Family Chats. We are coming at you with the next three episodes of Sweet Magnolias. We're talking episodes four, five, and six. Mm-hmm. Mid-season. We have only four more left after this. So we are almost, yeah, we're just over mid-season at this point. Yeah, yeah we are. And um, they have created for me this season a very deep-seated, deep-rooted, don't think it's ever going to go away, hatred for Mary mm-hmm. Vaughn. It's true. Like I hate her. Oh, I hate her. She yes, does so much course. damage to the people that we care about, mm-hmm. and we really see it come out in the in these three episodes for sure. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to say all this PG. <laughs> oh, I'm really interested to hear how you make it come out. Um, Mary Vaughn this season has become a, a with very a good villain. Mm-hmm. she's become a very good villain mm-hmm. i just want i don't know how her kids deal with her mm-hmm. they're her kids are going to hate her by the time they move out of that house it's going to be sad she's going to be sad and lonely and you know what i don't feel that bad for her no no because i'm sorry she why don't those ladies ever bring a tape recorder around when they go to mary vaughn like that's oh what God, they need to do. bring a tape recorder when you go talk to the woman in her place of business bring a flipping mm-hmm. tape recorder <laughs> Yes, because she just totally outs herself. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just no speaking. Like, like we have first the parking and zoning issues. Ugh. That was handled so insanely. Mm-hmm. From the little that I do know about that kind of stuff, you don't. That's not how that's handled. No, no. And for a mayor and his wife to be all behind it shows very poorly on them Mm -hmm. and especially in comparison with the hoops that those three had and not just hoops that were created because mary bond's a jerk face yeah but bureaucratic red tape that they had to go through to get their spa zoned as commercial versus okay i'm the mayor i'll do whatever i want done no red tape no rules no nothing i'm just gonna get this zone commercial because i want to yeah Yeah. because i mean the property behind him is commercial and i love i love several the way that maddie came in there and just totally called her out Mm -hmm. bless her heart that was my favorite maddie moment this season and then maddie was like she was proud of it bless your heart i love how maddie handles her business i mean i know we're going to talk about this a little bit more but um she she's so classy about certain things and I mean you guys know me I'm a hothead so I guess it's just like amazes me that she is with she is <laughs> but um that's all I'm going to say about it right now but yeah <laughs> well I think last season they had us again this season sees like a 180 in all of these characters yeah. because before in season one Mary Vaughn was just a nuisance a jealous yeah. harpy and that's all she was this year she's actually doing like illegal things and is actually being like a destroyer of lives in what she's doing mm-hmm. to this town yeah. and the people in this town so she's she was a minor irritant before who you just love to dislike and now she's actually being essentially a serenity's mob boss Mm-hmm, which is yeah. she's doing legitimately illegal things so i mean where we ended it last season when maddie handed her or yeah maddie handed her the bag and said you know i'm really glad we're past this we're you know not high school anymore we can wish each other well the same thing yeah it seemed like mary vaughn almost was going to have a change of heart <clears throat> of course we yeah. didn't get very much past that with her and now in this one it's she's come back in a really terrible way there's like it was nothing yeah and i like i don't that. understand her no I really don't it's i mean as let's say the mayor and the first lady of the mayor or whatever wouldn't you want the best for your town yes wouldn't you want the yeah. businesses in your town to succeed you would think so and although just, this is a generational thing so it's not even that he earned it really 
Because didn't know. the lady say his his dad and his grandpa before that were all mayors? Yeah. yeah. It's always been the other family. Thing is, not only that, but like with her acting the way that she acts, she's representing her husband badly as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like later on in the show, she's very big on how her kids act and present themselves and stuff so that she, he doesn't, they don't embarrass the family. <laughs> and I mean, her acting this way isn't morally correct either for a mayor's wife, in my no. opinion. No, I agree. I'm just a basic human being. But really, I mean, the mayor, he's not any better. I mean, just like mm-hmm. when they tried to go visit his office. I mean, like the secretary, it was so blatant that it was just like, I mean, she wasn't even trying to like pretend like he was just actually busy. It was blatant, like he's not going to see you. I mean, she said he didn't have any room on his schedule, but like Maddie said, there were a bunch of, you know, tea times listed. So I mean, like, it's just, it's amazing just how, but I guess Mm -hmm. that's, it's a small town. And like you said, his, his whole family has been mayor forever. So it's like, he doesn't feel like he has to earn it. He just is gifted it, you know? And Mary Vaughn like, doesn't care about any substance. She cares about what it appears. So that's why they're doing all these dirty deals in the back room because that no one sees that. No one was even supposed to know about it. And no one would have known had Maddie and them not been, had that bee's nest not, not been poked. But she is all about the appearance of her children behaving. She's about the appearance of having a successful marriage. And it's not even about happy. It's about successful mm-hmm. because she measures happiness by success. Yeah. And if it appears successful, then I'm happy. If I'm making money, then I'm happy. And I wonder where she got the name Fat Molasses. I don't know. It was kind of an odd name, I guess, but I don't know. I laughed a little bit. I was just like, what a not fun name. I'm going to cut this part out, but in that Vampire Diaries movie that was so ridiculous, she one of the things that the lead character says is sweet, sassy, molassy. What? <laughs> <laughs> And that's what this makes me think of every time I hear it because it's that dumb. Like, mm-hmm. fat, how, how is molasses fat? It's slow. I didn't understand that name either. Really Where did she get that from? I don't know. <laughs> it's thick. <laughs> that's a good point. It's thick. Ew. I'm like saying it like that. <laughs> and also, the I was so proud of the girls for putting on that town secret meeting. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I yeah. didn't I didn't know if they were gonna be able to get away with that, but I'm very glad that they did. I'm yeah. surprised Peggy was there at this point. I know. I think, she was there to be, I think she was there to be a spy on what's mm-hmm. going on at so, that point. But right. what I was confused about was I thought they were trying to do this like a secret meeting, but it was like everybody come and everybody know. So I was just I, I think I was confused at first by that. Yeah. I mean I she know, came in her role as like though. She came yeah, in her role as editor, but she was really there for Mary Vaughn. I think yeah. it was more of just come on, one, come all. I don't think they even really cared if the Lewises knew that yeah. they were doing it. So Yeah, it didn't seem like they were being too hush-hush about it. And I think with Peggy, I think that she does genuinely care about this town, but I think that she's, Mary Vaughn was the only one who she could, who befriended her because Mary Vaughn saw potential use out of her not friendship not kindness she saw use in peggy so she befriended her as the editor of the paper saw some power available there and took it mm-hmm. but i think that as peggy would sit there and listen to this i think that she's gonna start to stand up to mary vaughn a little bit more yeah because she's so. hearing i mean they're all talking about the crap job he's doing mm-hmm. and it does impact serenity yeah mm-hmm. yeah because I, I don't think peggy's a bad person i think she'll come around here she's just way easy mm-hmm was um the the mayor's secretary was that Peggy Vaughn's mother? No, I thought that too for a minute, but is it no. not? No. Okay. Oh, I thought it was too. Mm-hmm. I just I didn't say anything about it in here because we wouldn't know either way yet because we haven't seen Peggy's mom yet. But I studied out their faces. It's not the same woman. Okay. Because I thought well, that I'm gonna trust too. you because we clearly yeah. remember the Leela Priya incident. So <laughs> I totally thought <laughs> it was her mom right here on this one. <laughs> I clearly I don't pay attention. Too. Oh, man. So the parking issue is not even the only trouble that Mary Vaughn is causing. Right? Nope. No. And I think, 
I don't know why people don't see through that crap better. I mean, obviously, if Mary Vaughn is going to attack Cal, so we're, we're talking Cal at the board school meeting, school board meeting, board school mm-hmm. meeting, at the school board meeting, and if she essentially blackmails him in front of the board, in front of the people who are there, basically saying, you didn't win state, the only way you stay is if you put my boy in a starter. How are people not seeing that for what it is? I don't, I don't know, know if they care. I mean, I think maybe they even do, and it's not affecting them, and so they don't care. I just, and he took it too, st- I mean, I just, I'm disappointed in the board more than Mary Vaughn because he got them to state. Yeah. He got them to state without his, and his star player wasn't playing, who is the reason they got to state. Yeah. And they still came in fourth of all the teams that went to state. So, yeah, and they hadn't been to state in ten years. I mean, and all these people, and you could tell, like, if you look at the people complaining, they clearly don't play sports. So no. they obviously don't know how this works, and they obviously don't know what it takes to go there. So I just that vote felt so wrong, and that was our first little glimpse into Cal with his past. Yeah. That was a little like Ooh, that kind of popped up on a But again, this is another situation where they're out of left field. These these character traits they're attributing to our characters are out of left field. Yeah. Because he's been he moved fast before, obviously. He moved really fast. But he was he didn't he wasn't deceitful. He didn't try to hide things. He he did say in season one when he gave Maddie the ice cream for her divorce, and he said, she said, You don't talk about much. He said, No, so I understand if you don't want to talk about yours. So he did allude to the fact that I don't like talking about it. Yeah, but he wasn't secretive about it. And now when there's these little things popping up that never popped up before, it just is like, what are you trying to do here? Yeah. Um, going back to the school board thing though, with what you're talking about, I'm wondering if people just know how Mary Vaughn is and they just feel like it's not worth the fight. Well, I think she can persuade them to say, well, although they should be this too, because Jackson was the one pitching and they still lost. But she is. I think people just want to win. I think this town is a lot about appearances than it is about depth when it comes to things like this. And they want the accolades. They want the stardom. They want the power that way. And I think Mary Vaughn is able to convince them if my Jackson had had more time to pitch, he would have gotten them through the state. Clearly Ty wasn't starter material since he was not there is kind of the angle. I think she takes with them. So I think she convinces them. But I mean, the, the vendetta that she has is easily seen. And they're putting a lot of pressure on a high school baseball team. Yeah, it's well, high school, for goodness sake. I swear, though, like, I mean, that's how it is here. It, it, I mean, except for it's, it's basketball, because I'm in Kentucky, but that's exactly how things are. So Texas is football. Yeah, I mean, we... Mm-hmm. You don't get much. You don't get much of a second chance if you're brought in to do something. And you don't do it. You're out the door. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I guess I was in never more, part of like a D1 school, so I, don't I mean, know. it's more of a college level, but still, it happens in the high schools too. But I mean, and it happens in the high schools that are D1 worthy. Yeah. 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 Like if, definitely in college. I mean, if you don't do it, you're out. Like you don't get a second chance at it. Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't right. matter. So yeah. I, I think we just care in the South. We care a lot about our our sports like that. I don't know. State Jeanette championships are very important, huh? Jeanette missed that gene. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I don't care at all. Basketball is like my least favorite, but you know. We did discuss it in the group, and I know Shelby's feelings about it, but Cal's attitude not attitude his anger so i'm saying it came out of left field and it's, it did. it's dangerous it did. but do you think it's gonna like what up until like what point do you think it's gonna escalate to Here's it's gonna my, escalate yeah i mean my thing a is, out of it. i i don't want to see that happen but at the mm-hmm. same time if something major doesn't happen for it i feel like this was a wasted storyline too so yeah. i I don't know how I feel. I didn't like Cal that much last season, not because I never thought he would be violent or anything like that. Um, but I, I just always thought he was way too pushy and inserted his life himself into their life way too quickly. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, 
No, well, never mind. I can't even say anymore because that's in later episodes. Yeah, I know. I think that each couple, they have to find a way to continue to add drama to it. Yeah. And I think this is the easiest way for them to do that with Cal and Maddie. Mm-hmm. I think that... And I think that we'll see, and this is giving nothing away because this is how shows work, especially, I mean, we see, we've seen it done with Sanderson and it backfired where they leave you on a cliffhanger, hoping that it'll be picked up again. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we saw it last year with the car. They're going to leave things on a cliffhanger. And I think that this might be one of those things where they're hoping to set it up for, oh, will they, won't they? And they did it with Cal and Maddie last season because yeah. we ended with Bill trying to hold her hand saying, take me back and her and Cal, her and Cal and out. So I think that this is just, I hope it's not a reoccurring thing where every season it, it's like Cal and Maddie, will they, won't they? Because yeah. that's going to get real tired real fast. But I do think that, I don't think he'll be abusive. I think that we're going to find out about his past that he had a volatile relationship mm-hmm. that's going to set Maddie on edge. Yeah. And again, that's giving nothing yeah. away. See, I don't, the feeling I get, I don't think he would ever lay a hand on Maddie. I don't Or the kids. So. I just don't, I don't, I get, I don't have that feeling that's where they're going to go with this i think if he does anything it's going to be just maybe yelling or even emotional which is still absolutely not right right but i don't see them going the physical Mm -mm. abusive way in this i don't either but i also hope they don't gloss over any of the other stuff because i feel like maddie is smart enough that if the man is constantly losing his temper and, and yelling and doing these things in front of her kids, that's not, it's not an environment you want them to be in. So I don't, I hope they don't gloss over it either. Although we don't see him lose his temper in front of the kids. No, he no, never, but we don't he's, see he's, it. He's, he's being really voice. well, well with the yeah. kids. He's, he's, really he's being he great with the really, kids. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that. And he's become, he, he stepped up in a way that even their own father hasn't like with, yeah. uh, Mm-hmm. with that book that uh tyler asked his dad oh did you read this I'm like, no i never got around to reading that mm-hmm. and yeah. cal said well, let's read it together like cal mm-hmm. is and I, that's why i think that this is going to be not as big of an issue as they're building it up to be i yeah. think they want us to guess and i think they want us to be nervous and i think they want us to get upset but i don't think it's going to end up being the issue that we think it is I think that we'll find he has learned a lot, but it's going to be a trust thing with him and Maddie because that was a stickler in season one. Maddie mm-hmm. said, I don't trust. And he said, me? And she said, no, me. Yeah. I don't trust that I can give myself to you. And then once she does, it's after she says, I love you, that all of a sudden these things are coming out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Cal's good with, you know, it would be easy for them to play it off that Cal's good with Ty because Ty's his student or whatever. Um, yeah baseball whatever he's a player but mm-hmm. yeah but he's very good with all of the kids mm-hmm. I mean we're about to talk about this now um too but even with Kyle with his physical therapy Cal was very helpful with him mm-hmm. oh, yeah. then I mean he has a relationship with Katie he brought the pizza thinking about the kids yeah mm-hmm. you know he does a lot of little things that even if he does have this issue he does a lot of little things that he's thinking of everyone else as well it's not just about you know yeah him and maddie dating yeah and i think i think that's why it's not going to be as bad as it seems like it's going to be especially since we've seen what we've seen in the show in terms of drama has been fairly mild Mm -hmm. up to this point but I think bring up Kyle is a good a good segue there because I mean when you watch Cal with his kids, yeah, Bill was like, "Hey, let's go to Hamilton." But Cal is like, "Let me walk you through this hard process that you're having. I've been where you are. Let's walk through this together." And yeah. I think that Kyle, I think that's one thing that when we were talking about Noreen with Kyle, but I think that Cal and that was one thing that helped Kyle come out of it was Cal. No, those I agree. two names are really hard to say back back and forth <laughs> like that really fast. <laughs> Yeah, but even you know like in a lot of shows and stuff too to build on the drama like they make it so that like when the mom starts dating someone else like they're focused on that relationship and that's it the kids are by the wayside it's mom and boyfriend whatever yeah Cal seems to be making an impression and like that's not the right word but like he seems to be um like making it known that he wants to be involved in everything, not just in Maddie. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. In in Maddie's life. <laughs> I didn't even go there. But now I did. Whoops. But that's that's a good point. I think that he's I think Kyle really benefited from that. I think that it was a good way to build Kyle's character this season too by doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even like Cal even offered to carry him from the porch when he fell. Oh yeah. When he was getting into the house. And mm-hmm. I um that was just really sweet to me. Yeah. yeah. I, I even liked Cal's um like how he was being even with Maddie at that point. Like, do you want me to go? Do you want me to stay? He was being very yeah. respectful. And I did love that part between Maddie and Cal and Kyle because it felt like they were finally letting Cal kind of really see the real the messiness of it yeah you know the bad parts of it even though Cal's been around for some of the bad parts it's still it it, it felt more personal yeah it felt like a kind of a personal um moment between them and honestly, I think that's one of the reasons why I think that Kyle or that Cal helped Kyle so much because that's something that Kyle has been missing, and what he's he's felt alone, he's felt unseen and unheard. And I think Cal made him feel heard, like with that pep talk at PT. Yeah, Kyle made him feel heard. Yeah, yeah. I and think Kyle needed very, that. Yeah, he's been very um. Because, like, part of Kyle's issue, I think, is that he always feels like he's being pushed away. And I think Cal giving him that special attention helped mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. And we see that a little bit when Dr. Ashley comes to the house and Cal's like, you can leave anytime now. And yeah. Dr. Ashley has to say, why would I leave? Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. like, he even says, he straight out says, now, I wanted to write this down so I remember exactly what it was, but he basically straight out says like anything that I'll say will be taken as stupid or it won't matter. Yeah. And that broke my heart. I mean, that's not word for word, but that was really sad for him to even think that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says everyone leaves too. I mean, he tells him that, you know, so. And that has to be rooted in his dad because I think Maddie does a good job of hearing him and encouraging him. Yeah. At least the first season. And I think it's Noreen. I mean, he got close to her and then she had to turn around. And leave. I mean, I do. And I, not to bring this back up, but I mean, I think that's part of where his issue is. I mean, he's, I agree. These people he's caring about are leaving. And that's yeah. sad. Poor and then Annie. Annie, I mean, I think the situation thing goes back to her a little Ugh. bit too. I mean, so I don't know. Yeah. I feel bad for him. Cause the then one thing. Also- go oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say like when he fell, like Amanda, you mentioned that like when he fell on the stairs. I mean, he even used those words to Maddie that, what did he say? Like invisible and angry and twisted is how he felt. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Those are such big emotions for such a young guy. I hate that that's how he's he's feeling. I love yeah. that he was able to finally get it out though. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, he was really irritating me the first few episodes because I just wanted him to say something. Mm -hmm. you can tell he was bottling everything up and didn't want to you don't want to talk to anybody Mm -hmm. and i think that was part of being he knew what he did was wrong and i feel like he was i don't want to say too proud that's not the right word i'm trying to go for here no i even think he was being harder on himself than even anybody else was as far as like mistakes he had made i mean he he felt like like you said, he was he, broken. Yeah, he had. He was a lot less. Um, his attitude was a lot less crappy these episodes mm-hmm. too, because yeah. he's coming out of it. Yeah, I mean, he's still in a funk. You can tell, but he's definitely he's getting back to the lighthearted kid yeah. that we knew before. Mm-hmm. The one thing um, in these episodes, I forget which one it was in, but it cracked me up when they were doing the yoga and Kyle fell and tied like only you can fall off your own butt. (laughs) I was dying. I was laughing so hard at that. Like I even texted Jeanette and Amanda because it cracked me up. It was nice to see them as brothers instead of enemies again. Mm -hmm. It was. I loved that. It gave me hope with my kids. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even, right. <laughs> Ty's kind of um 
in my opinion, growing up a little bit more this season yeah. too. You see yes. him more with Katie this season too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see him become a much more well-rounded, well-rounded person, more mature. Yeah. You could tell he was trying to not only help like Kyle and Annie, but he was really trying to help his mom. Yeah. You know, he was trying, not Annie. Oh my gosh. Katie. Katie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess 82, but <laughs> yeah, he, he was, I figure he became a very well rounded gentleman this season. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, nice. Even him taking her to the, um, guitar lessons and she she wanted him to come in with him and it was um it was kind of funny he's like it sounds like they could use some help um (laughs) it sounds like they could use some practice anyway when he said that he's a little rusty and stuff it's just it's really nice to see that he's that it's taking it that way because he really is um because the first season he was kind of not really full of himself but he was more about his baseball and stuff like that and now that that was taken away from him um it seems like he's more about his brother and sister yeah yeah I totally agree and I think we come back to it too with their issues stemming from their dad when Bill talks to them about moving mm-hmm. I mean he didn't show up for Kyle's community service where he would have shown up for Kyle no matter or for Ty no matter what right. yeah mm-hmm. but for Kyle I didn't think he'd want me there, but that's crap. You didn't want to face the situation. So you yeah. ran from it because that's what you do. Yeah. And so I think that that really impacted Kyle. And I'm going to pause here. Is it, it's in this one where he tells him he's moving, right? Yes. He hands him the keys. Okay. So when he goes to the house to tell uh, the kids he's moving and he hands Ty a baseball one, he hands Katie a ladybug one. I didn't see what yeah. was on Kyle's is the two faces, the drama, yeah, the, the drama, faces. the drama. <laughs> theater and i think that he kind of thought kyle look at i see you okay i was like yeah called him out you didn't you weren't there again you weren't there for me yeah and kyle didn't and i i was actually instead of thinking because when this when the first couple episodes came out i think in the notes last week i put kyle's attitude sucks in big letters but this time i'm glad he stood his ground mm-hmm. and said you weren't there for me and it sucked yeah and you weren't you're never there and I think and I, that Bill needed to hear that. I do too, because I think, I mean, I don't know why this season has me not hating Bill as much as I, I did before. I know, me I too. I don't know that he, I, I don't think he understands. I no. think he needs someone to just flat out, like Kyle said, like you should have been there kind of thing. Because I think he's he is making an effort and I think mm. he's trying, but he's not doing enough. Yeah. And so someone has to call him out and tell him like, that's not enough. Yeah. But you know, the thing with him too is um, when him and Maddie were married, it seems like Maddie was more the homemaker and she he was like working a lot and stuff. So it was normal for him not to be there and like no questions were really asked about him not being there. Mm-hmm. Maybe so much, but now that he's more absent, he's not there at home. Like he's not there at all. It's being seen more that he's not around. Yeah, I agree with that. He used to at least to come home at night. They used to at least see him you know, at nighttime or maybe with dinner or at least in the morning before work, they used to see him. And now, you know, he's barely a presence except when it comes to baseball games. And that's even half now. Mm -hmm. So he's just become a lot less involved in all of their lives, which is very wrong on his part. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm moving away, you know, for you guys. I didn't agree with that part. He was, I feel I, like he's more running. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yes, but I but think I, he thinks they want that though. I know. And that's, that's the problem is he thinks that's, that's the what problem. they want because he doesn't understand. Yeah. yeah. I he thinks he's think, just, he thinks he's, he's doing this for their good. Yeah. I do think it will end up being better for everyone because maybe in some way they can build a relationship without all of the mistakes and all of that in serenity sort of haunting them and maybe mm-hmm. they can start to build something back yeah. because i mean bill is not a liked person in that town that was not going to change anytime soon and 
he kind of does feel super awkward there by his own doing. I mean, I'm not saying, but I can understand why, but I think the fresh start was more about him than the kids and that he shouldn't have spun it that way. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. just, just own it, you know? I think that Bill showing that kind of change or at least the potential for change because he was humanized. That's why we don't hate him as much because he was humanized in a very opening episode of this season Mm -hmm. where we actually saw that he did actually care about something other than himself. Noreen is another person who has, her character has done a 180. Where last season, I can remember being so ticked off when she said he needs his mother at his games and bill had to say his mother is at her games and she had the audacity to get mad at that like what yeah but now this season noreen has been more humanized again and now i don't know what to do i i like noreen better after this season i mean she she had her um she had her moments where she overstepped her bounds and stuff but overall like she's changed a lot the one thing um with her too was when she was on the porch with Kyle and Maddie see, uh, saw her um and then Maddie um Maddie didn't say anything that night like she just left them do whatever they had to do which I thought was really mature of Maddie too but then when she was talking to her friend she said I wished her good night and then I listened at the door like a bat with a hearing aid that was another <laughs> thing that cracked me up too <laughs> That was one of my but, favorite um, lines. <laughs> yeah, I never heard that before. I didn't know if that was a common <laughs> saying or not. hearing. I was gonna say, yeah, none of these sayings are common sayings necessarily. Like they come up with some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. But then you never know, have I heard that. No. Never. <laughs> but then she came. She she confronted Noreen then later and talked about the boundaries when the kids weren't around which I thought was very, probably more mature than what I would have been. Well, both of those times, wasn't Noreen that went to her? Mm -hmm. Like in the spa, Noreen went up to Maddie and apologized. Yeah. And said, I realized I overstepped. Yeah. And I think the shocking thing for me is I had to realize, oh, Noreen's new at this too. Yeah. 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 I mean, she's still a baby too. She's so young. Yeah, I mean, she's like what mid and to late And I feel like we forget back. that a lot of the times that she's 23, 24, maybe. I mean, maybe mid 20s is what I'm guessing on her. Yeah. I'm she's thinking young. like yeah, think between. My age. I mean, because she's a nurse, right? So she at least has her degree, yeah. right? She has her degree in nursing, right? Mm-hmm. She's not like a medical assistant. She's a nurse. No, she's a nurse. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she at least had to go to school for that. So she's mid 20s, I would think. Mm hmm. And it's still a baby. I mean, Maddie's almost twice her age. Yeah. And I mean, even her talking this season two, you know, she was saying how she's sorry that she overstepped, but she feels as though the kid, she has a connection with the kids too. And, you know, she wants to be involved with them, which I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel because you guys have kids. Maybe I feel differently, but I felt like that was kind of nice. I mean, I'm sure, I don't know how long her and Bill were together or whatever, but I know that she formed a relationship with Kyle and we didn't really see a relationship with anybody else. But if she feels that way, maybe she should have a chance to, you know, be around Mm -hmm. for them, especially because she has their little sister. That's the key. For me, that's the key. I mean, like, regardless of my feelings towards this woman, that's my kid's sibling and I would want them to have a relationship and in order to do that you're gonna have to have a relationship with their mom because yep. when we see dad's kind of a you know what he's not really in anybody's lives so if you want the kids to have a relationship with that baby you're gonna have to make sacrifices and be the bigger person yeah and I don't we're not there yet never mind yeah I know I'm trying to there's only so much <laughs> we can say <laughs> I think that moment in the living room, you could see that when Kyle was trying to insert Maddie into the conversation he was having with Noreen. And Mm -hmm. I think Kyle was trying to make that connection. I think he was trying to let his mom see that Noreen is valuable to him as much as I think with the 180 thing with all the characters, I think this is why I don't know what to do because last year they made their communication, their communication seem secretive and almost it, it, it was 
inappropriate in my opinion last season the way yeah. they went about their communication the way they emotionally sought each other out whenever they had emotion and maddie did it to him too and i think that's what made me feel it was inappropriate because maddie's a 25 year old woman who's in a relationship with her dad his dad she shouldn't be running to the 17 year old boy when she has an emotional issue noreen not maddie yeah that's what i meant noreen um but in this ep- in the, these episodes when noreen was at the house talking because maddie allowed it Mm-hmm. Kyle was trying to pull Maddie into that world and trying yeah. to see, you know, this is, this is an okay thing. And even Maddie got uncomfortable with how yeah. much she got along with Noreen mm-hmm. and how, how she connected with Noreen almost instantly. So mm-hmm. this season has altered my perception of that a little bit because I think all the characters are so different this season. That's true. Yeah. So they all are. the situations are different. Whereas last year, and I still maintain in the first three episodes that that communication was weird and inappropriate. It shouldn't have happened in that way. But then in these three episodes, we kind of see that it's, <clears throat> she's young. And yeah, that's, and that's that what it was been, down to. And that might have been Kyle's way too of, you know, showing Maddie, like, listen, she's not trying to take your place, but I'm comfortable to talk to her. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. I still need you too. Yeah. 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 Because I feel like Maddie in the first season was, threatened that Noreen was kind of taking her place in Kyle's life mm-hmm. to an extent mm-hmm. yeah yeah I yeah. see that and it's interesting because last year I feel like Noreen was kind of a pariah too because she and Bill did this thing together but it's like the moment she severed with Bill Noreen is loved in that town mm-hmm. and I think so- everybody yeah I think people wanted to like her <laughs> But they couldn't because of the situation she was in. So I think maybe after they split, like they were able to. I think they're just the, feeling sorry for I her. I don't want to say she's a victim because she's definitely not a victim. But in some ways, I think she, I mean, we didn't see how it all went down with Bill. But my guess is. Either way, he was married. He made promises. I, I, and I agree. I'm just saying he probably made promises to her in ways. Again, that, she's young. That's the she's thing. Sure made, yeah. So, I mean, she's an adult, but barely if that makes mm-hmm. so i mean i'm giving her a little leeway here i don't know mm-hmm. and the other, she, thing, the other thing is that she owned up to it to maddie yes bill still hasn't owned up to it right but noreen mm-hmm. went up to her and she said i can't imagine or I, I i understand the depth of hurt and pain i've caused you and your family and i am truly sorry for what i've done mm-hmm. that was yeah. a pretty dig on mature thing to do to accept responsibility for what she did. she didn't she didn't lose responsibility she said bill had to do with it too but so did i yeah. So I, it, she understood. And I think that's why she's more likable this season because mm-hmm. we're seeing that she's not just pretending. Because last season it felt like she acted as if, what? We're in love. We're getting married. Everyone should be totally fine with this, which is what she was doing last season. Mm-hmm. This season she's not doing that. No. Yeah. Last season, in my opinion, it seemed more like she was like that little girl looking for the happy ending fairy tale thing going on. And now this season she's more aware of the fact that she messed up yeah yeah but the other thing is too you know something that might be contributing to everyone else liking her you know maddie is well loved in the town it's a small town everyone knows her she's grown up there maddie is trying to make an effort that might make other other people have an effort and i i'd agree with that i think that maddie is a big portion behind that and i think that Howie trusting her, even though there was a damage done to her practice and, you know, offering her that or not, he didn't really offer it to her. She saw it. She's, Mm -hmm. she's not too proud to take any job because that's, what's good for her. And I like that the reason she went, cause she had, she didn't have to stay in serenity where there's, there's this history and everyone knows what she did to this family. She chose to stay because Kyle was there and she felt it was good for Kyle and she felt it would be good for the baby. So again, we're seeing huge leaps and bounds with Noreen where she's yeah. maturing beyond where she could have been. And I think the reason she's maturing is the situation she's in. Yeah, absolutely. And moving in with Isaac, I think was a big, big step. And we see Eric and Isaac both be incredibly kind to her. And yeah. I love how Eric loves her and talks to her yeah. and helps her out with that stuff. Um, so then at the end of episode six, we see Maureen um, calling Maureen. Isaac to go. <laughs> I heard my name too. <laughs> I, I think you said Maureen. I definitely <laughs> said Maureen. <laughs> I, like, I didn't Maureen, go into labor, thank you very much. You need to tell us something. <laughs> okay, so at the end, well, Nora seems to think that she has a brother, so, you know. 
She's yeah, it's because yeah. Yeah. But it's Luca. It's half fish, half man, brother. <laughs> How did I miss this? I don't know what you were frozen with Anna. Oh, I missed so much. <laughs> all right. She was telling us all about her fish brother. Oh. Luca. Okay. His right. bed is the water. Yep. Well, that makes sense since he's a fish. Yeah. So at the end of episode six, Noreen goes into labor and Isaac helps her out. Um, so speaking of Isaac, Noreen living with him seems to be good for not only her, but also for him too, with everything that he has going on. Yeah. I I was very sketchy about that whole situation. I felt like it came out of left field. I, I just thought I was like, I don't, I did not think oh, it was going to go over very well. I thought it was kind of weird. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, is Isaac and Noreen going to start hooking up? Well, that's what I thought at first too. And I was I like, did too. well, what I think about this? But They're around the same age though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So we finally figure out who Isaac's mom is. Mm-hmm. I was not surprised. No. I was yeah no I thought this I, from I knew first I felt time like I, I knew it was Peggy mm-hmm. um but she was a oh I almost said a bad word she was <laughs> not a nice person and she wasn't ready to talk about it yet which I mean that's a lot of news to drop on someone I right get then, it though. and I she's the adult Isaac wasn't even prepared for it though right they didn't know that's she, what they were going in there for yeah mm-hmm. I don't think she should have just up and ran out <laughs> Like, Mm-mm. I think she should have been an adult and said, I need to process the fact that you're here. Yeah. I'm going to come back to this, but I'm not ready to talk about this right now. She but said, I, I need a minute. And then she ran out of the room. And then that was it. Come back. I mean, like, not that we know. We, we didn't see Isaac leave either. We don't know if he waited. Well, no, he, we said, he said she ran off. So I'm assuming that means she didn't come back in there. He said she yeah. ran off again. But what I'm saying is we don't know if he sat there for like a millisecond was like okay i'm 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 gonna bounce true which i would have done yeah like, that's what i think happened i think out. that he was so uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. and he thought well she clearly doesn't want to talk about this so i'm gonna leave but she could have come back in the room after need after taking that minute of earth shattering yeah. news yeah but yeah our magnolia girls are there aren't they for him that yeah, was so flowers. sweet i know yeah I loved I loved their back and forth but that whole scene. It was so nice. It was actually kind of nice to see Isaac at home. Yeah. Now kind of his more personal life because I feel like we've only seen him like in the restaurant and right. we haven't really seen him be a person kind of outside. Yeah. It was really nice this season to see him kind of his character to kind of grow a little bit more and see him. Mm-hmm. Because I really do like Isaac. Yeah, I do too. And I really wasn't, he was kind of a eh character last season. I felt like I wasn't yeah. totally like psyched for his character. Mm. This season t- completely changed my mind. And not only am I totally in love with Isaac, but I love his, I love the actor too. Cause yeah. I love yeah. his TikTok presence, to be honest. Me too. <laughs> me too. I love it. He entertains me. Mm-hmm. I think that's and, what he elevated in all of our groups in our minds is when yeah. we found his TikTok. Mm-hmm. We've had his TikTok and all his and dance. And... dance. Mm-hmm. But we got a little bit of that this season too. We did. And I love how they brought that in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he's a good dancer. And so they're going to bring it into the show, which yeah. is, as Marine and I love, The Office. The Office did that a lot too. Like with Steve Carell could play hockey like mm-hmm. in an actual league mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you know you see that and so i love when shows bring even though it doesn't talent. really fit mm-hmm. the storyline they'll still bring in the actor's yeah. natural talents yeah um i mean new girl's we, a shining example of that with jessica day yeah she's saying everything zoe dashnell has her own band yeah i mean i think this i think that's what they're trying to do i think they're trying to bring it because even with helen mm-hmm. <clears throat> heather headley has a beautiful oh. voice Hope yeah. we get more of that, by the way. I do too. Yeah. I could have sat there and listened to her sing for a long time. Mm-hmm. And also D- Dana Sue giving him the time off. There, I feel like all the all all of the girls were just so supportive of him. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. They were the sweet magnolias. Yeah. They, it seems like when when they're on your side, they'll do anything for you, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are friends I want, even if they don't like the situation. I mean, I love you guys too. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Amanda. <laughs> yeah, but you're not here here. Yeah, I, I don't think I talk to, to anybody here. as much as I talk to you guys. No, I don't. Not even a, not at all. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think I talk to my husband as much. I talk to my own family. Yeah. No, I don't talk to I know anybody I don't as much as you guys. <laughs> even more than my husband, I think. I talk to you guys more. We literally. We talk every day, all we day. We talk long. every day, all, all day. day. Yeah. All day. All day long. No matter what we're doing. Until four or five in the morning. Four or five in the morning until like two or three in, in the morning. <laughs> yep. We sleep somewhere between that. I don't know when. Every <laughs> once in a while. I think Eric is one of those friends for Isaac too. I think yes. watching them have those campfire talks being really good, a really, really good source for, for Isaac, not just to bounce things off, but he's genuinely a friend of Isaac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Eric's Roche. helping everyone in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. Um, Roche thought that Eric was his dad based off of like how much he was helping him out and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, Isaac we, I felt like we one. thought that last season, but we kind of nixed the idea last season too. Cause uh, didn't he ask him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that was when they went on their asking. trip. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah right before they went on the trip. I remember that. She told yeah. me when she was watching it, she thought that it was Eric. Or maybe was he that. was, maybe he, she thought he was lying. Yeah. yeah. He been. really yeah. was the dad or he didn't know. And so he just said no. You know, there's a lot of, I could see it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you didn't know you're a dad, you wouldn't be like, oh yeah, you're my son. Right. <clears throat> but also eric's been taking care of helen oh yes i love this friendship they have right now Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i think obviously we wanted more last season with them because we could tell that eric was into her obviously he was clearly jealous whenever she would talk about ryan or ryan would be around and so we knew that he had feelings for her he would make her do overtures i mean he does for other people too and that's the great thing about eric is he's just genuinely a kind guy but I think that Eric showing up for her in this way through her pain just put a different spin on it because it was he didn't care for her situation. He liked Helen because she was Helen. He cared for Helen because she was Helen. And he cared for her because he was Eric and she was a human being. And that's just how he operates. So I love when he brought her lunch to her office and it just. It, he just kept showing up without being yep. asked. And I think that that is something that Helen, yeah, she's got Dana Sue and she's got Maddie, but even then, like when the miscarriage happened, she, or the, when Ryan left in season one, she had to ask for a 7 a.m. margarita night, you know, mm-hmm. but Eric just keeps showing up for her. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something Helen really, really, really needs. Yeah someone who's going to show up no matter what's happening, no matter what it is, just because he wants to be there for her. And that uh, they did have that talk at the restaurant that they've never eaten at, which is crazy because Serenity is so small. Like, how do you not eat at every restaurant there? Right. (laughs) That was very odd to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that Eric was expecting a different conversation to happen there. Yeah. And when it didn't, I think he's like, yeah, no, no, that's all I want. That's all I want. We're good. We're good. Mm -hmm. But uh, that karaoke night kind of. Like gave people sport. something to talk about. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I like that while they were singing up there, you could see di- recognition at different points on both of their faces as they uh-huh. looked at each other. And there was one point when da- not Dana, so when Helen, she almost looked like concerned, and then she was like, "Okay, yeah, okay." See, <laughs> yeah, I noticed yeah. it more on Eric's face, like when he was singing those lyrics. I mean, I'm looking at him like, "Oh, he he means those lyrics." Yes. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and Marcella. I think Helen finally understood that the way he was singing, it, and then she was like, "Okay, okay, yeah." It reminded me of the Gilmore Girls when Lorelai was singing. Yep. Yeah. To Luke. Like, oh. and I. Let's not even bring that up. That is the moment that makes me cry on Gilmore Girls harder <laughs> than any other moment. I cannot handle it. <laughs> but you know, the thing about Eric too, like always showing up for Helen, um, it's probably easier for them too because, you know, Maddie and Dana Sue, like they're there, but they have their kids. They have their other stuff. Eric and Helen are both single, no kids, not, I mean, Mm -hmm. they both have jobs, obviously, but not really any strings attached. Yeah. You know, so he can kind of show up whenever at any, 
her beck and call mm-hmm. whenever if he wanted to. Yeah. But I think even if they did have kids and they were in a relationship, then they would he would still show up that way. Yeah. So that's yeah. He, he has a more availability that way too. Yeah. Because they're the ones in the relationship. Yeah. And I think was- that her even telling him, you know, I want to have kids still. I, this is still something I want to do. And him being so, I don't, what a weird situation to be in. I don't want to say I wouldn't respond the way he did, but I don't know how I would respond in that situation. Yeah. Obviously I'm a woman and I, I like guys. So it would not be a conversation that I would have, but just yeah. to put myself in Eric's place what i i can't even i don't i can't even begin to understand how to respond to that of hey yeah. so if we date you're technically gonna be this baby's daddy yeah <laughs> but you don't have any right. skip daddy so it's just it's such an odd situation but he was so understanding of it and helen was so open with i understand if this is not something you can get into yeah it makes sense mm-hmm. that you wouldn't yeah i love how upfront they are with each other mm-hmm. and i love their banter too like how um I think it was in these episodes that Helen went to the restaurant and Eric was like, oh, are you here for food? And Helen's like, no, don't judge me, but I actually made my own food today. Mm -hmm. And Eric Eric was like, oh my gosh. You know, like he was kind of surprised. I just thought that was kind of Mm -hmm. cute. Mm -hmm. That was when she came in to talk to him and she walked him out by the river. And that's where she tells him, you know, I still want to do all this stuff. And they decide Mm -hmm. we'd like to give this a try, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so of course it, that, that leaves us with he's got secrets he's got something he needs to share with her too which we don't know what that's, that is yet you know every episode has to end with that i know but there is one we get a little bit more clarity on and i will say a little in these three episodes Tiny. because it's all we get is a little more clarity because dan sue and ronnie i mean this this back and forth nonsense like data sue come on pull it together oh my god she had me so frustrated um just because i don't know i mean i I was proud that you know i mean eventually i don't know i mean it starts out like she's she kissed ronnie right that last episode episode three okay so then there's jeremy who she's you know at first still kind of canoodling with him and and not just kind of like they were like she called him back in to have a full-out makeup session in her open office where her daughter seen her yeah and this is after she made up with ronnie yeah then acted like annie had no right to ask her what was going on that bugs me guys oh yeah yeah i don't don't know i mean to an extent yes the child you don't get to make judgments about my adult life so in a way i understand this but asking questions is different than passing judgment exactly i mean this is obviously like this is something that affects her yeah because she knows what's going on with her father so yeah. dana sue bugs me though so i she, she bugs me a lot yeah my thing was she had loyalty to her dad and her knowing that dana sue is kind of messing around with both of them she's very close with her father too mm. so mm. i mean part of her probably wanted to tell him what was going on but she didn't want to jump the gun if it was nothing type of thing and then dana sue acting like that i don't know i mean they already have a shaky relationship and i feel yeah. like dana sue just kind of makes it worse with her attitude towards her yeah. and with her she's almost flippant mm-hmm. about her relationship with ronnie i mean that's this kid's dad yeah and mm-hmm. if, if you don't want to be with him fine don't be with him but tell him you don't want to be with him right. stop mm-hmm. having both guys at your disposal and she does eventually do the right thing and she does takes jeremy out into the square like again with the publicity why of this like why it? she makes up with ronnie on her porch she makes up with jeremy in our open off like dana sue have you you grew up in this town yeah you know how it is so like, i'll feel bad for her when she gets blasted on social media no, i do like the, how that happened when annie was like hey, by the way annie's acting has gotten a lot better this season i will say i agree yeah but when she came out there she's like um there's a lot of comments that you shouldn't read. <laughs> Dana <laughs> Sue goes to grab it and he just pulls it back. Yeah. No. And I get the reason. Kind of, it's you reap what you sow. I mean, you, mm-hmm. it's true. You led Jeremy on to believe nothing was happening while you're letting things happen. I mean, yeah. you kind of deserved it. Yeah. No, I understand. But in the end, I mean, Ronnie's really putting. 
I don't know. I'm a Ronnie girl. I can't say too much yet. I should shut up. This is again <laughs> where they flip the script on me because last oh. we saw him in that last episode of season one, he was gaslighting a little bit with her and he was being yeah. very forceful with her. And that was where I thought they were going to take it. I was going off of that. And in the beginning, that's why in the beginning of these episodes, I'm like, nope, wrong one, wrong one, wrong, wrong. But see, I'm, looking back, looking back now, where I think it appeared as gaslighting in this, I now that I, we've gotten to know Ronnie more, I see it more of just the playful banner that he has with Dana Sue. I, I think feel he like he's trying the, to pick up like nothing happened is what it felt like. Sure, yeah. it felt like no, nope, we're all done. We've, we've I've done, and he got he got a little mad at one point, and that was what I was. That was where I thought the gaslighting that came in because he was being very forceful, but then he even got mad. Yeah. And he like started to take ownership of her in the house. And it was like, whoa, 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 pull back there, buddy. Yeah. yeah. And that was what, that was where I stood when we came into the season. I know that you guys like him from something else. And so I know that Jeanette especially likes him from something else. So coming into this, I was not a Ronnie fan. I am more now because it was just surface level with Jeremy. He well, and I, yeah. And he's in Ronnie. I think he's, he took what Dana Sue had said and he's putting in, like I mean, said, he's putting in the work now. He's fixing mm-hmm. the porch. He's fixing the drawers, all the other stuff at the house. He's bringing, you know, flowers and blasting the music, which really spoke to my 80 girl, 80s girl heart. With him outside, like walks that. Above him with I a thought he, yeah, I mean, this is what I picture. <laughs> like he's, he's doing what she's, she's asked him to sort of prove himself and he's doing it. He I is, did love so. when she came in the house and he was on the floor with the table upside down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I did love that. Yeah. and that scene where she is obviously sleeping with him and she says it at in episode four she comes up and was like no with ronnie and it was hot and then she goes over to, to helen's house and her shirt's inside out like, i mean and then she says and getting back together if that's what this is which it isn't oh my gosh just like i'm with so ronnie confused. at this point like I, I would be terribly confused too and i would start to get a little annoyed with okay yes or no here lady right and that's still where I'm at like I don't even care that you know you're being intimate with him as long as he understands what this is and as long as you are communicating and then he understands that just because you got intimate doesn't necessarily mean you're getting back together I mean that's that's my issue like she's not saying anything Mm. so he's being led on in my opinion so yeah I was gonna say she's very much screwing him around like she wants she wants to have both of them at her disposal when she figures out what she wants. And that's not right. Yeah. And I think she likes the way it feels to be wooed, which any woman would, especially sure. after the pain. And there's only so much we can say in these three episodes, even though we know a little bit more. But I think that she, it's been two years since she had any sort of relationship at all. And I think she enjoys this process but she still has that fear there. So it's causing her to be too back and forth, but it's just, it's just not fair to him. While we can understand why you have that fear, you need to talk about it and you need to say, Hey, no, because this is why no for right now, let's work on it together without doing this other stuff and getting confused about it. And I did like when uh, they're doing the VBS picnic and she was like, no, you said you'd help, but no flirting. He's like, uh, can I do both both? Um, at VBS where there's a bunch of kids and you're making sexual advances on her? Probably not. Oh, I'm, I'm, opposite. I'm thinking, go ahead, do both. I like it. <laughs> I don't know. Vacation just... Bible school where there's a bunch of small children around. I don't think I would they let Ronnie were... They weren't right there. They were off doing stuff. So no, it's... they were serving lunch. <laughs> he stopped when the kids got there, okay? No, he stopped when she said no. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely did not stop. Still... Oh, oh my man. got on my nerves this season. Yeah. Last season, she was my favorite this season she got on my nerves it's mm-hmm. like i don't know this season it's like doing a whole it's messy with my brain yeah it's messy. like the people that i didn't like yeah was, yeah but anyway she was the only one who stayed solid and Eric. Yeah. dana sue is very much about herself this season mm-hmm. and while that may be okay to an extent it's also annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It is. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but if, I mean, we've been talking about this this whole time of just different characters, like doing a complete 180. So there's another person. We talked about this a little bit last week too, like Jackson still mm-hmm. making progress 
in becoming my favorite character on the show um him and what's blossoming with annie mm-hmm. definitely my favorite relationship on the show so mm-hmm. i'm here for it and i think this episode we get to see a lot of i will say that what i don't like about any of the season and i said i would wait until the next episodes is because it seems to me like she's mostly punishing ty for not liking her yeah and that's petty and that's stupid yeah it's a teenage thing I to think- do but that's why she's driving me crazy because she's being so mean and so rude to Ty. And I get that the, the voice memo came out, whatever. He made that right. He talked to her about it. But mm-hmm. it still feels to me like a lot of what she's punishing him for is not liking her. And she's saying all these really terrible things about him to her new friend, who is sketchy, by the way. Mm-hmm. And she's just saying mean things about Ty to this girl. And about I how, don't like that girl. Why did know, I totally um, not miss? I that was at BBS. Know. I don't remember yeah. her saying anything overly mean. Maybe she was saying that he's. Just, I'm sorry. Because Lily is very into Ty and is yes. like, oh, it must be nice to be like, and she's like, yeah, it's not that great. And she's just saying rude things about him. She's not, it's not being overt about him. She's saying rude things about Ty. Yeah. And I think it's mainly because he stirred her. But I think I'm she's just, jealous. I think she's wanting to say bad things to Lily so Lily doesn't like Ty because she, Annie doesn't want Lily be. to like Ty. But yeah. she's been this way to Ty since he said, you know, we're just friends, basically. Since he started dating Cece, she's been this way to Ty. She's so hurt. She's that, a teenage I, girl I get who's it, hurt. but that's why I don't like it. Yeah. I understand, like with Data Sue, I understand where it comes from, but I don't like that it's there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's petty and rude. Something else about Dana Sue that got on my nerves. I wanted to say this up in the other part, but now we're past it. Good. I the whole dinosaur chicken nugget thing really really bugged me. I didn't even bring that up because I was. And I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, like knowing what I know about like mental health stuff with kids, or if it was like an actual issue. But like it really really bothered me that Dana Sue took such offense to this kid wanting dinosaur chicken nuggets. It did she mean, take she offense just... to him wanting the nuggets, or did she take offense to his attitude because she didn't realize what was going on? That's what I felt. I feel like once yeah, she understood what exactly too. what was going on, I think she thought he was just being a spoiled kid. Yeah. He just yeah. was throwing a fit. But, and, you know, I'm not if, as a mom, I'm not gonna deal with that either. I'm like, no, you're gonna eat what I made you or nothing. I feel Sorry. like she didn't even attend. My issue is that like me yes. as the viewer, I mean, I see this kid and I mean I, I understand that some kids out there are just brats. I I'm, yeah. I mean this happens, okay. But there were, he was so adamant on this that it felt like to me, there is, there is more to this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why don't we like calmly talk to him instead of like, I mean, the kids want Stano nuggets and then you offer him grilled chicken fingers and veggie tots. That's not the same thing. I'm yeah. a grown person. I'm going to be like, mm, no, I was wanting chicken nuggets, not grilled chicken strips and veggie tots. Like <laughs> two totally separate things. Yeah. So I mean, like. <laughs> For me, I thought that food was kind of insane to be serving a bunch of small children. I, I don't know. My children wouldn't eat it. They would be like, mm, they'd eat the grilled chicken, but that's probably about it. As far I as wouldn't I'm eat concerned. it either. And I'm 26. <laughs> that's oh, what I'm saying. Eat it all day, man. So, so I just feel like she it. should have been more sensitive because she even said to Ronnie, is this kid trying to get on my nerves? Well, no, he's a child. So he's probably not trying to get at you. There's probably more to this. Everyone yeah. else around her was sensitive to this kid's needs. Yeah, and- Lily was pastor june was ronnie was it's yeah. just dana sue that had this like major attitude it bugged me a lot actually well i mean they set it up to make us feel like i mean they set us up to for the viewer to understand there is something deeper here the way yeah. he was responding to it they set us up for that but i think there is also this taupe in hollywood that they chefs get like that about their food like if yeah. every show you watch where there's a chef involved yeah they get like that about their food and i yeah. it's, it's just not act, because you can still be a human being and still be proud of what you do and yeah. gordon ramsay would have made him dinosaur <laughs> and she did to be fair, so did dana sue she did but it took she her I, I think with pastor june pastor june knows this kid mm-hmm. and she knows yeah. his background and she knows what he's coming from so she knows what's happening there lily has him in her group so she's with him all day so she understands why he is the way he is Mm-hmm. So, I mean, these, Ronnie is the only one who picked it up. And I think it's because I almost feel like it's more because he knows Dana Sue better than he realized the kid. Maybe. Because he, I, I feel like he probably was like, this shouldn't be upsetting you this way. So let's figure out a way to fix this. And then he asked about the kid because he, he knew the dad. Yeah. So everyone who understood knew his kid's background to some degree already. Yeah. 
other than Dana Sue. Dana Sue didn't know his background at all. She should have, and I think the way she was, when she handed him that, I think she was nice about it. It was just when she walked away, she was rude to somebody else, which being a teacher at BBS and actually handling lunch at a BBS, lunch at a summer camp, I can't say I haven't done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Those kids can get on your nerves real fast. Yeah, absolutely. So I get why she, I, I don't fault her for that, actually. I think that once she realized there was a deeper issue, she pulled out the stops and made and sure that his kid had beyond. more than what he yeah. requested, more than what he required. Yeah. So I, I, I personally think, didn't take issue with that. I think um, maybe a lot of us are just disappointed in Dana Sue this season. Yeah. yeah. And True. so we're, we're going to pick at her. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know. For me, that's just not. How <laughs> it. Especially in the face of Ronnie being the one to be like, hey, this mm-hmm. is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of feel like Dana Sue should have known, but she didn't know. Anything I about just her. wish she had been, cause I mean, she even said to the kid, are you going to just take this and know and be happy with what you got? I mean, she, she gave the kid attitude. She mm-hmm. did. She did. And it, that bugged me because it's like, you know, I know like, cause I mean, I've done vacation Bible school, like here in town. Too. I mean, a lot of times those kids are kids that need it to come there. They need it. And they need the extra attention and they need the extra compassion. And it, it just bugged me. Yeah. I can't say I've ever given a kid attitude to his face. Well, that's what I'm saying. I've stepped away and I've been like, dude, (laughs) we've all done that, you know, but she, she was not, I don't know. It bugged me. It wasn't as graceful as it should have been. That's true. And again, that's her all season. So I think that, I think there's kind of images of that in Annie with Ty for me. Mm -hmm. That she's just, Annie, you've known this kid your entire life. And now because you want him and he didn't want you you're going to start telling people bad things about him that's just not that's not right no it's not okay so that's why in the last episode we did a sweet noise when i was like i still have problems with her that was why yeah but i I think jackson brings out a good side of her i think i was so focused on annie and jackson i just missed all of that it was time i love it well yeah let me tell you one of my favorite moments and this is just a random moment and this was such a subtle i thought it was a really fun thing but when she is when they are getting lunch back to lunch at bbs and he says, like, wow, your mom went really went out. And she's he's like, Did you let did she let you do anything? She said, Well, I made the ham biscuits. And she he gets only the ham biscuits and like three of them. And I was like, <laughs> that is I mean, it's so sweet. I mean, I just I, know. I melted. I was like, Oh my gosh, she's gonna eat all only ham biscuits. What's interesting about that scene is she says, I made those, but you should try those because they are amazing. And he just looked at yeah. her and he went, mm-hmm, and watched mm-hmm. her while he put the ham biscuits on his plate because. I think yeah. that Jackson, with the benefit of having a manipulative, bat crazy mother, yeah. and I, there's not actually another word on the end of that word mother, but it, there might be at some point because we're talking Mary Vaughn. Nope. I think that he understood what she was doing because he's been in that shadow his whole life. And so he yeah. made sure to say, I don't care about what anybody else has. I care about what you have. Yeah. And I think that Which there was so, so much depth and meaning to that one interaction between the two of them. Mm-hmm. the key is literally like he's my favorite me and the too. last oh i know before i watched this season the very last thing that you guys heard me say about jackson is i hate that guy he was my oh, least no. favorite yes. and now he's my most favorite complete 180 mm. complete yeah and i just I mean, love just him everything he's done and i mean i know a lot of people i've seen on our on our group and on other boards are still unsure of him they're still you know mm-hmm. is he up to something i don't think he is i think everything he is doing is genuine that apology at the coffee shop was mm-hmm. completely genuine and yes I mean, one of the nicest apologies i feel like i've ever heard yeah um you know he he comes to vacation bible school and makes it known he he's not there like he said he's not there for the you know what he doesn't he go to that said. church yeah he doesn't even go there like he's like i can get that at my church he's there to spend time with her yeah mm-hmm. and he he made her the little paper or what a little origami camera which that was, was cute oh, I, love the world. I love I that mean, part he, he's really just doing everything right yeah he's making he, a point he, to show her that he sees her go ahead Shelby. and he's being a gentleman too like this might not be in these episodes <laughs> <laughs> He's being Jackson is being a gentleman with her in that he he is, he is doing all the right steps. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's even when he when he first goes to VBS as they're setting up and he's like, you know, I just wanted to come see if you were doing okay after that. And that's clearly not the reason he came there. He wanted to see her, but he makes her feel so hurt and so seen. And again, the last season, that's what we had with her and Dana Sue. That was their biggest problem is she yeah. felt ignored by Dana Sue completely. Oh, mm-hmm. Annie's never had that. 
No. Right. And it's just like these kids, they have good moms. They do. Their moms are not yeah. bad mothers. Yeah. But it's just the times that we live in where there's all these social media things and these peer pressures at school that, I mean, we all had peer pressure growing up sure. in different ways, but I think we didn't, I didn't have social media growing up. So it was so way different and way less aggressive. Yeah. And so I, I, I think that these kids just need to be heard by the peers that they have more than by their parents, because my daughter is 11 and she still brushes off as, well, you're just my mom. You have to say those things. No, but that's not why I'm saying them. I'm saying yeah. Cause they're real. They're true. But it's so hard for them to grasp it because they need it from their peers too. And Jax yeah. is doing such a good job at making her know, not just feel, but know that she's heard and she's seen and she's valuable. Mm-hmm. Which brings even, us, go ahead, show. Even with Annie, with Ty and Kyle, when they were, because they're kind of on the rocks right now, but even when they were like really good friends and stuff, Ty and Kyle were very much about themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Annie was like, they talked about certain yeah. things and stuff like that, but none of them were ever being heard by the sure. other ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think with I, where I struggle with these though, and we keep going back to how people have changed so much, there's not much time between the two seasons, technically. Like, no, I know no, that there's no a lot time. of time, like when it was slow and stuff. Zero time. But I think that's why, like, I'm struggling to wrap my head around, like, like one day Jackson's a total jerkhead and tomorrow he's I think it was the accident like, that changed him. Yeah. I mean his sister yeah, the was in this accident that could have very well hurt her badly. And I think it was enough to like kind of shake him out of this, like, what am I doing? Like, and then the fact that Annie, who's someone who shouldn't have stood up for him because he's been a jerk to everybody yeah. she cares about, she did. And I think it just opened his eyes and makes him a better person and that is my favorite kind of romance trope is like the boy that gets changed for the better by yeah. some mm-hmm. girl but I, so. will, I will agree with Shelby it is kind of hard to wrap our heads around this season with <clears> all <throat> of the like about faces and all the characters yeah I would agree with that I mean you know his is the his makes sense for yes me. it's the, the only one that makes people, sense to me yeah 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 and Kyle's makes sense with everything well, yeah yeah. yeah but um even the kiss like at the end of the night like between Annie and Jackson Mm. I loved how it happened because he made his intentions known yeah he even gave her the time to say like whoa no this is not what I want before he just went in for it which I thought was just really nice especially like from what like a 16 17 year old boy I mean he he wasn't all over he made sure there that this is what she wanted too and it was just so sweet yeah gentlemen Mm -hmm. I agree which, given who his mother is, I'm surprised that he's as <laughs> right. good as what he Yeah. Knows. Well, I think this is all new for him. Mm-hmm. Because you see him trying to find these different ways into Annie. Yeah. And But yeah. He, he doesn't stop, though, just because it's difficult. And she's yeah. pretty closed off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, one person who's not loving the new relationship with Annie and Jackson's tie, he's oh. pretty jealous. Um, y'all laughed crazy. about this. I laughed yeah. at him being all jealous about it. Like, no, Ty, you had your chance, sir. Yeah. You had too. your chance. And I honestly feel like he's only jealous because it's Jackson. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't jealous absolutely. of Simon. He didn't care about that. Way more to do with Jackson than is with Simon. I mean, mm-hmm. than Annie. Yeah. Absolutely. I, don't I thought he, he was being real disrespectful to Cece. Mm hmm. He was well, being so disrespectful, in my opinion. He was. I mean, just sitting at the VBS and him just, Cece sitting there talking and he's just staring at Annie and Jackson. Mm-hmm. I felt I mean, bad for her. I did too. And I don't even like Cece. But See, I, I, I like her more this season too. I feel I like I like a lot of people way. more better this season. I, I didn't I like change. Cece a little bit better. I like her as much as I did last season. Yeah, I don't I care. Just don't care about her. <laughs> I feel like I she's feel. just so like spotty. Yes. Like, I feel like if she, if her character had more of a presence in the show, yeah, that yeah. we would probably all like her a lot better. But she's so just like she pops up, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when she was really helping Helen, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you okay. go. When she was helping Helen, I thought like when they brought that in, like I thought that she would be around more because of Helen being mm-hmm. around so much. Yeah, but she's still just like one or two lines here, one or two lines there. No, but Ty did kind of ghost her, 
And then like he expected her to just drop everything and be there when he wanted her there. Yeah, but well, he expected geez. that either. I think that when we first see them in these episodes and they're walking along the river and she's talking, he's trying to talk about his hurts and that kind of thing. She doesn't really seem to hear him or mm-hmm. care about what he's saying. And she just is so excited. And it's great to have something you're excited about and passionate about. And your partner should care about that too, because it's important to you. Mm-hmm. But it felt like every time we saw Cece and him, it, it, other than the picnic by the river, it felt like Cece just wanted to talk about how great her job was and how great everything was going yeah. for her and how great how great how great for me for me for me and I get that she's excited she's again she's a teenager and she's found something for the first time ever that she's passionate about I get that excitement yeah. so that's why I wasn't really terribly offended when Ty was watching after Annie and Jackson I mean he probably shouldn't have done that that much but yeah. Cece had been in her own world the whole time too so I think I think it's yeah. I think they both did the same thing to each other is essentially what I'm saying. And that's true too, because I mean Ty's kind of going through it too, like with him not being able to play baseball and stuff, and Cece's just kind of bragging a little bit about how great her life is, mm-hmm. and Ty's is kind of in shambles right now. Yeah, too, their lives are they had yeah. like, like their lives are kind of going separately right yeah. now. Exactly, you know, new things are being introduced to both of their lives right now. I don't know if that relationship's really gonna. I don't think it is. No. Stick it out. And the reason he started in the first place is the main reason it shouldn't stick out because he said, well, what better way to quash the rumors? <laughs> that was what he said yeah. reason one. Like, Cece doesn't deserve that either. I think Cece deserves someone who's going to care about him and he deserves someone who's going to care about him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, her and him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also, I, I mean, Cece's, she's very busy. I mean, she's not, not only is she working for Helen, she's pretty much almost raising her siblings. Yeah. I mean, her parents aren't present i don't feel like at all her dad's working all the time she's working all the time she's taking care of the siblings and so i do i feel like i i I don't know i guess i'm the only one who likes cc kind of more than i think you guys do here's another thing for her in season one we get this image of a dad who's hard who's unyielding who's unkind Mm -hmm. and now in this season oh my dad and i can talk about anything what you were afraid of him last season yeah, yes. but remember, like, kind of at the end of last season, it was more of a, it was that that relationship was kind of changing. But she made kind it sound like she could always talk to her in that picnic by the river. Yeah. She That's was like, I could always talk about my dad. Like, he was a proud of you for proving your namesake, whatever, but yeah. you were afraid of him. And now you, you can't, you can't change a narrative that's already been played. Yeah. That narrative has already been played that she was afraid of him. And I think that's I think that's what bugs me about season characters, the inconsistencies in her character and her background. Yeah. That I can't just fully get behind her. I, yeah. I can't. I agree. I don't mind her. I just I can't fully get behind her like I do with the other characters. Yeah. Yeah. But I did show enjoy seeing Ty like finally try to find something yeah. besides baseball that he was excited about. Um, like playing that song. I mean. Who knew? I didn't know he could like play the guitar and sing. Like that was awesome, you know. Uh, Logan Allen actually told us that when we interviewed him. Remember, we were talking about. He's like, actually, it's different for me because I'm actually the one in the sports, and Ty is the one in the theater oh, musicals. I do remember that. I didn't realize that he played the guitar though. I do remember him saying he was a theater guy, but I loved it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I cool. thought that was so cute. I love seeing Ty with Katie more this mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did too. That was such, such a sweet little moment. Mm-hmm. But and I had to get back into Cece, but I think the advice she gave him sucks. I know. What about trying to find something to connect with Bill yeah. about? Just yeah. pick something he likes, even if you don't like it. Yeah, like that was, I didn't like, like that advice. Dumb advice. No. Yeah. <laughs> to me, just communicate with your father and tell him the truth about what you're feeling, and he'll yeah. probably be responsive. Yes. Yeah. 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 Find something you enjoy doing together rather than picking something he already likes that you don't like. Like mm-hmm. even with the book thing, if it, I feel like, because I mean, again, I don't know why I'm defending Bill like so much this season. I feel like if you, he had just said to Bill, hey, I'd like to find something that we can do together since baseball's off the table right now. Mm-hmm. Bill would be receptive because I mean, he's already learned his lesson with Kyle and how he was ignoring him. I really think Bill would have tried to make the right move if it had been clear to him yeah but unfortunately bill is one of those kind of guys you gotta lay it out in like <laughs> basic terminology and say this is what i need and i think he'll yeah. do it <clears throat> i think he can't will leave anything to interpretation i think he would, I think he I think would. He now would. 
maybe season one bill no right i agree maybe season two bill maybe i feel like bill's trying I feel like he's growing i, I do. do i feel like i mean we can't really y'all know that's it's, it's kind of hard to talk this. about bill without going into yeah. other episodes so yeah, in my opinion though like going back to what cc's advice was to kyle i mean to ty um like with Bill being the father and Ty being the child, I don't feel as though Ty should have to mold himself to something that Bill right. likes. Absolutely. If anything, Bill should be the one that's right. doing the molding to an extent. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yep. I don't like everything my kids like, but I got to find out what they like. And then yeah. I learn about it. There's things yeah. we can do together. I mean, we were just talking about it earlier. Yeah. I mean, we were just talking about it earlier. You act excited about stuff that's not necessarily exciting. Like, yeah. if your kid's happy, then you need to act. And, like- it, and because of that, it is exciting. Exactly. You know, I mean, it, yeah. If yeah. you are being a good parent, I mean, even that crazy drawing that looks nothing like what they said it is, you are in a way still proud of it because mm-hmm. they are. They did they it. Are. You know, and they and did a great job. Their creativity and their imagination, yeah. and it's. It's, I mean, being a parent is way less selfish or it should be than what yes. Bill Townsend makes it out to me. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Like that flower the that selfish actually, thing you should ever do. Yeah. Like that flower that actually looks like a top hat still going to hang on your refrigerator for three months until you get something else. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Now you may get or tired when you've seen, you know, the 15th flower that looks like a top hat, you know, but <laughs> you still have to act excited every time, you know? So I think that's pretty much all we have to say about those three episodes. I mean, we have a lot more to say that we are, I, I can't tell you guys how hard it is for us to hold back. My oh. plan, by the way, was to just watch the episodes that we had to do shows on and just watch them every week. And that lasted three days before I watched I mean, all had the other plans. <laughs> so it's we worth are, it. We are holding back quite a bit, but next week we will be talking about episodes seven and eight. Um, so just two more episodes we have in Sweet Magnolias. Seven and eight is next week. Nine and ten will be the week after. And uh, if you want to, if you actually have watched all ten episodes, even if you haven't, but you want to talk to people about the show, we have a lot of people who are joining our groups now saying, we just need to talk to someone about this. Join us on Facebook on our, um, fam- our Sweet Magnolias Serenity Family Fan Club. And we have discussion posts in there. We've got a bunch of fun things going on. 30 days challenge. 30 day challenge. 30 day challenge. 14, the mm-hmm. Valentine's Day thing. We've got some Valentine's games coming up. So a lot of fun over there. A lot of discussions. A lot of people want to talk about mind blowing things that happened in the last four episodes. <laughs> so join us over there and uh, we can chat with you there. Make sure that if you want to talk to us about our podcast or what we do or any of our groups or anything you want to say to us, we, we like feedback. If it's bad feedback, if it's good feedback. We like to build off of that. So you can email us at familyfanclub2021 at gmail.com and we will respond as we can. And next week, let's see what we got coming up next week. Next week we have, This Is Us is not back next week. So we, or it is. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. It isn't. Is it or is it not? When's the Olympics over? Your model there. It comes, it comes back after the Olympics are okay. over, it says. All right. So that's going to be next week. So what you guys have coming up for you is 911 and The Resident will be Sunday. Sweet Magnolias on Wednesday. So watch mm-hmm. out for those. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.